Sabah. Uh, good morning, Program Director. Uh, good morning, Program Director. Are you able to hear me? Uh, good morning. Uh, thank you, Program Director. Um, are you ready to take over from your side? Uh, I see that we are. Uh, sorry, I'm sorry. I'm not the program director. I still have some technical issues. My side is still having some technical issues. Okay. So, um, uh, should we maybe wait for him to? Uh, can I take me into the office? Yes. <laughs> okay. Let me just... please hold. Okay. Uh, good day, colleagues. Uh, Marcel Wilson speaking from the DPSA. Sorry, uh, we do have some connectivity issues at this stage. Um, I hope everybody can hear me. Can you just give me indication? Uh, we can hear you, Program Director. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. Um, we have a dual session today uh, that we the webinar is going to cover uh, work around uh, the organizational functionality assessment tools that we have and how to institutionalize those and lessons that have been learned, as well as the productivity measurement tool. Um, so uh, we're first going to deal with the uh, organizational functionality assessment part of it and after that we'll then go into uh, the productivity measurement um, uh, system and tools that we have and also lessons that's been learned there so welcome to each and every one uh, I hope all of our colleagues here in the DPSA can connect uh, they're trying to uh, and Ishmael is also still struggling to get the connection uh, but Anton is ready with the offer uh, so I would like to hand over to Anton at this stage uh, to run the program regarding the organizational functionality assessment. So thank you and uh, welcome to each and every one. Uh, this is, as you know, uh, integral part of the Integrated Public Service Month uh, program. And then I also would just like to do a small advertorial as well because we're having another webinar system tomorrow on uh, uh, the business process management and how to institutionalize that and lessons that's been learned. So uh, please log on to that one as well if you're interested in business process management. But with that, then over uh, to Anton, uh, who will lead the program with regards to the organizational functionality assessment tool. Thank you, Anton. Um, just before uh, uh, Anton uh, presents, uh, uh, program director, uh, we do have uh, the chat box here for, question, uh, for questions and answers, and uh, we'll only be able to take those Q&As after the presentation has been made. Thank you.
Uh, is uh, Anton um, in the webinar? Sorry, Anton is still struggling with his mic. He'll be with us shortly. Good morning, um, good morning, colleagues and gents and, and, and colleagues. Uh, as I said, I'm Anton Ferry. I'm responsible for the for the organization of functional assessment and each role in the public service. What I'm going to do quickly, what I'm going to do today, I'm going to talk quickly for you guys on the directive, the definition, but an overview, and I'm going to let you what are the, six, the critical success factors in how to manage this program and things like that. And when, once we've done that, I'm going to introduce uh, Ms. Saul from Northern Cape on Social Development and Mr. Reddy and Mr. Mahabir from Kazan Education, where in both departments, they were very successful in implementing this offer program. And I think we can learn from what they have done in terms of the, uh, in terms of the offer. Sure. If we if we if we look at the offer, what what is the offer? If I had to explain the offer to someone in, in, in simple terms, it offers about a system systemic analysis of organizational functionality that it would it would be measured against the institutionalized systems, structures, policies, and, and processes, how you use your, your resources and how you, you deploy your resources and all and how and what is your capacity to deliver on, on your mandates. Next one. So what on the screen we have there is the, basically the overview. The, the offer has covers five factors. What we do in the offer, we do in performance. Now those five black ovals are ported by 42, 42 assessment factors and a number of indicators. But the way we the way we run this whole program, the important part of this, the management program is to manage the, the it's a project management process. Right? So in terms of a project management approach, well, what we, in our capacity building, we focus on these things. We tell the guys, you have to build a project and have a set up a project plan, a project governance structure, a project in, in terms of your project, your works approach, whatever project you coordinate a number of work streams. And then there's a process you have to go through by using the indicators to, to gather information and, and to do a data analysis from that, you will develop a report, and, and then there's, there's, there's levels of quality assurance in this process built in. And then the end result of this is to offer a report and an implementation plan that will, that will focus on how do you improve your service delivery in, in your department. Next slide. So you will always ask me, what are the, the challenges when you when conducting an offer? And this is the things that project, that project managers have, has to manage in, in the offer. And that my our guests today were very really good at managing these challenges in their departments. That's why they to, were so successful in conducting the offer. So, so first thing you need to do is develop a sustainable project plan. That's the first important part. The project plan gives you just your starting time, who needs to do what. And from DPSA side, we have a draft plan to be provided to the departments to develop their own project plans. Second important challenge you need to manage in your department is to prioritize resources to, to conduct the offer. Because it takes some time and you need to prioritize the resources to get to, to manage this process. Important part, because the offer is a multi-skilled assessment, it covers the whole of the department from A to Z. So you need a multi-skilled assessment team from various uh, parts of the department. Third, fourthly, this commitment from management is critically important that they support your process uh, through throughout. And then after that, important Part three is, uh, is you base your findings or must be based on evidence-informed analysis. Must be evidence-based. 
in my, we try to remove all subjective personal views from this process and then work from an evidence based evidence based pr process. So at this stage, I would like to hand over to Ms. Tapsi Saw from Long Term Public Social Development to speak to us how did they manage to do a successful offer in, in their department? Tapsi? Ms. Saw? Can you hear me? Yeah, you can sit. Yeah. yeah. So, so, are you there? It's we can hear you, Anton. Tepsi, yes. We can hear you. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, Tepsi, if you're paying me, I'm going to go down, down to, down to uh, Rama and them. Rama? Rama? Yes, Anton? Tepsi is, is uh, have, having a bit of a chance with, with, with her sound. Can you guys start from, from your side? And then Tepsi will, will, will take over, over from, from you when, when you are done. Is that fine? Okay, uh, we'll start with Mr. Mahabir. Okay, thanks, Rama. Thanks, Sunil. Pepsi? Okay, yeah, I had my end. I think that's a little bit later again. I look at the issues with the cup. Can we maybe proceed from our end? Hi, Sunil, can I hear you? Good morning to you and other colleagues present. May we proceed from our end? You may proceed, should you? Thank you very much. Um, colleagues, once again, a very good morning to all present. My name is Sunil Mahabir, and um, I work within the Department of Education in KZN. This morning, Rama and the team are working from um, Durban, and I'm working from Maritzburg so as to mitigate the potential impact of load shedding. You... Essentially, we want to share with you an experiential okay. understanding of the OFA process within our department. And um, we want to start the session off by you providing you with an sharing? understanding of exactly how the process was managed. Yeah, I'm trying to set it off. Sorry, colleagues, can you mute on your end? Where's where? Anton, can you mute, please? Thank you. As I was saying, we want to share with you an understanding based on our experiences with the OFA pilot project within our department. And to start the ball rolling this morning, I'm going to ask um, our team in Durban to share with you a very short video, which I think is instructive in relation to crystallizing some of our salient experiences in relation to the OFA process. Rama, over to you and the team in Durban. Thank you, Chair, and good morning, colleagues. We, we want to flight the, the video. Uh, I think we need access uh, program director. Uh, um I've made you I've made you the co-host. Uh please just try to um just try and upload the video. Thank you. Thank you. No, I'm out of the My name is Louise Sina. <laughs>
Sorry, colleagues, uh, Marcel Wilson speaking again. I would just request everybody, I see we 164 participants, please uh, just have a little bit of patience while we sort out this technical glitch. Uh, we're struggling uh, with the Zoom today. I don't know. Uh, that's Murphy's Law, I suppose. Uh, just give us a, a little bit of a break um, whilst we're trying to sort out uh, the participation and so forth. Uh, and apologies for that. Uh, but we'll hopefully be on our way very soon. Thank you. Uh, good day, Rama. Marcel again. Uh, Rama, are you uh, coping on that side? Are you are you winning? Rama, can you hear me? Sure, he can hear you. I have him on the other line. He said we should be able to proceed with the video in the next minute or two. Okay, thank, thank you. you very much. Uh, so uh, again, for the participants, just be patient. Uh, we hope to proceed very shortly. Thank you. talk.
Now, still, there we go. We humans can learn a lot from geese. Yes, that's right, geese. In fact, in 1991, the famous anthropologist Angelus Arian gave a speech called Lessons from Geese. And what follows is my take on that story. It's truly a marvelous sight to see a group of geese flying together in a perfect V formation. Research has shown that as each goose flaps its wings, an intense uplift is created for the birds behind them. Further studies state that this teamwork adds 71% more flying range compared to a goose flying on its own. So the first leadership lesson is that partnerships and teamwork rule the day. Understand that people who share a common direction and sense of community can get where they are going quicker and easier because they are traveling on the thrust of one another. When a goose falls out of formation, it suddenly feels the drag and resistance of flying alone. It quickly moves back into formation to take advantage of the lifting power of the bird immediately in front of it. The second leadership lesson is that once you've established a good team, stay together and work together. Sure, times will get tough and you may become annoyed with one another from time to time, but synergy cannot be created by a single person working in isolation. If you've ever watched geese fly, you've likely seen that when the lead goose tires, it rotates back into the formation and another goose flies to the point position. The third leadership lesson is that it's important to share the load amongst team members. It pays to take turns doing the hard tasks and sharing leadership. As with geese, people are interdependent on each other's skills, capabilities, and unique arrangement of gifts, talents, or resources. While it's not always possible to hear from the ground, geese are a noisy bunch when flying in the air. There are several theories of why this is. One theory is that the geese honk to encourage each other, while another theory hypothesizes that the honking is used to communicate where each goose protected. They stay with it until it dies or is able to fly again. Then they launch out with another formation or go catch up with their previous flock. The best teams I've ever been on were made of people who genuinely cared for each other and would always help each other no matter the situation. It seems geese figured this out a long time ago. Have you ever seen a gaggle of geese that were uh, either marching in line along the road or even crossing the road? Bringing all the vehicles to a screeching halt to make way for one of nature's slowest and most vulnerable species. And the part that is most striking is the way that the geese will be completely oblivious about the impact that they are making. They would just carry on as if they had all the day in the world. With all that is going on around them on the road, the adult geese make sure to keep everyone in line and care for their young. Sometimes, leaders can get so caught up in their projects or problems that they fail to keep their ship in order, keep folks informed, and consider everyone's needs. Steady leadership demands that even in the most difficult situations, leaders remember those that are most vulnerable and also critical to their success. 
namely their people. Colleagues, once more, good morning to all of you, and we want to uh, reiterate our apologies for the technical glitched experience, but our appreciation to um, Mr. Reddy and Sir Sturum Keith for assisting us from our offices in Durban. For, before we proceed with um, an analysis of um, the GIST video and its implications in terms of the OFA process, I want to provide you with an indication of exactly what transpired within our department. And the perspective that I'm going to share with you is one which will include the difficulties, the challenges, the constraints that we encountered because I don't want to provide you with a to share with you our perspective in terms of one department in one province. And it's important for us to understand the context within which we are operating. Our department has um, approximately 6,000 schools which are broken up into 12 districts. And we have a workforce in excess of 100,000 employees. And that is the context within which we attempted to give effect to OFA during the course of the pilot process. Some of you who have um, an affinity for research might well refer to what I'm going to share with you as um, an action research case study because it provides you with um, an understanding of exactly how we dealt with the OFA processes from head office right down to our schooling system and um, the reflections that I will share with you are nothing more than reflections based on the experiences that we've had. And we don't want to suggest even momentarily that our perspective is going to include a prescriptive list of do's and don'ts. All that we can share with you are some of the good practices, some of the things that worked and why they worked. And you can then look at ways in which you could possibly emulate those but always taking into account contextual factors. It's important colleagues for us to note that right at the outset of the process, there were two fundamental constructs or anchors around which we pegged over. The first was the notion of um, our government, our state being a developmental one. And the second was that OFA need to be linked very clearly to um, a theory of change. I'm going to amplify on both of these shortly. The issue of a developmental state is fundamentally in relation to the work that we do within our department. And it's important for you to create a nexus between the work that you are doing, your core business, your vision, your mantra, and the fundamental business, which is essentially the rationale for the existence of your department or organizational entity and how that relates to OFA processes. Within the context of an education department like ours, we are focusing primarily on the issue of quality public education, which we disaggregated into um, 
classroom practices which we wanted to enhance, and we also wanted to improve at a systemic level the issue of school functionality. So it was very important for us to look at OFA as a process which we would locate within the epicenter of what we do as an education department. It's also um, axiomatic, but something which I need to mention that OFA shouldn't be seen as um, a mere technocratic exercise. It's not just about ticking of boxes or compliance per se. Rather, OFA is um, an organic and interrogative and inquisitorial process. And it's a process which does have the potential to engender a tremendous amount of benefit, both for the department at a broad organizational level, but also in terms of individual growth, professional development of the officials who were participating in this process. With regard to uh, the second anchor that I mentioned already, i.e. the theory of change, and I think the Goose video provided us with a very powerful illustration of how the theory of change can be utilized within an organization as large and complex as ours is. And fundamental to the notion of the theory of change was the issue of dialectical relationships, the interplay between head office and districts, district and head office, schools and districts, schools and communities, and equally importantly, to try to address the very obdurate challenge challenge that we've always issued of silo mentality. OFA gave us the wonderful opportunity to engage with colleagues from other business units outside of our chief directorate, outside of our branches. And for many of us, it was the first time that there was the kind of spontaneous collective reflection without there being some kind of um, external entity which was compelling us to attend to the issues of administration and the analysis and reflection of the variance between what we purported to do on paper in reality in relation to the grim reality that we frequently encountered, especially in light of budget cuts that were manifesting themselves at all levels within the education system in KZN. OPA also provided the department and those who participated in the pilot project with a great chance to get to know each other as individuals, to understand the inherent processes in relation to the business of other entities which were outside of head office. And we forged wonderful partnerships, friendships, which transcended the traditional divide of us merely interacting with each other as officials, as directors, DDGs, et cetera. So in many ways, it was ushering a kind of egalitarian philosophical inflection or ethos within the bureaucracy. And it's something which we're most grateful for. Folk, I want to very quickly go through the issue of the success factors. And I want to start off by encapsulating what Rama shared with us in terms of the Geese video. Fundamental in terms of the Geese video is the issue of partnerships and teamwork ruling the day. This is based on the premise that people who share a common direction and sense of community can get where they want quicker and easier because they're traveling on the trust of each other. And fundamental to this was the issue of creating a broad and heightened awareness at all levels within the administration in terms of the philosophical and conceptual framework which informed OFA processes. Right at the outset of this project, we had to engage with um, the office of our HOD, the office of the MEC at that stage, and to bring them on board and to get them to understand provided us with could yield for our department. And be very fortunate that we have an extremely progressive MEC and HOD who um, provided us with their unstinting support.
happy to do this. Sorry, uh, Marcel speaking. Uh, we're just getting a lot of questions. Uh, do you have a presentation? Because we're still seeing Rama screen at this stage. So I'm not sure whether you're talking to a presentation. No, I'm not talking uh, and to perhaps a presentation. Rama... I'm, sorry, ah, okay. I'm, just, I'm just sharing a perspective. Would you, but okay. we can put now, together. Yeah, okay. Sorry. Yeah. Perhaps Rama can just exit the screen as well. Uh, but yeah, thank you for that. And sorry for doing that. Uh, no we were just and, wanting uh, to can, confirm. The Thanks. other option is Rama can show you his and Dudu's pretty faces from uh, our other office. <laughs> that well, that might can happen as well. <laughs> that might inspire and enthuse but, colleagues to new levels of operational functionality. Yeah, Chase, essentially, you. no problem. Um, we received the buy-in from uh, both the level of the executive authority and the accounting officer, and that's of fundamental importance, so that you have the support, the unconditional support and affirmations from um, the thought leaders within your organization. Linked to that was the need for us to establish a good team. It was quite a daunting task for the department to establish five work streams because when you look at the OFA architecture, you need five work streams and each of your work streams has to have a group of individuals, officials whose business sources within OFA we go beyond the human capacity that was prevalent within our branch and to access personnel from other business units across the entire bureaucracy within head office and districts. Now, folks, the key lesson here is you all know your organizations. And when you're choosing people to participate both as work stream leaders as well as work stream members, it becomes fundamental to the success of this exercise. If you choose people who are those who get very quickly out of the starting blocks, those who require very little extrinsic motivation, those who do not need to be prodded and constantly cajoled and sometimes even coerced into doing their work. Choose those individuals within your department who have the requisite energy, the skill set, and the levels of motivation to be able to come on board a process of this nature so that they can give it the collective traction that it requires. The next issue that we focused on was um, while working together in teams, you will find that um, the teams have very different areas of focus given the content which the OFA does in fact traverse. And this meant that there would be constantly a need for interaction across work streams, both within and across work streams. You also would encounter a little bit of stress and um, irritation insofar as certain individuals saying to you that they didn't fully understand the work, even though they had been workshopped ad infinitum. So you had to go back to the drawing board. So please don't be despondent. You know that it's axiomatic, a, a chain is as strong as its weakest link. So you've got to consistently affirm, understand, and provide ongoing structural support for individuals within work streams in order for them to understand the OFA process and for them to understand that the nature of the process is one which is intrinsically problematic as such. So there's no such thing as smooth sailing and the challenges that we encounter are ones which are good in terms of engendering the kind of findings which will inform the recommendations and your implementation plan where the OFA process can provide the department with a clear and sober assessment of the extent to which it can identify critical areas which are in need of improvement. Also fundamental in terms of this process, and once again going back to the GIS video, is that you will realize that the colleagues in OD will not be able to participate in all of the work streams. And um, there was a need for us to build the critical capacity of individuals. Within our department, I must say with some degree of pride, 
colleagues that um, we now have people outside of the OD fraternity who are OFA experts. Outside of people who have the OD training, we have people, for example, the Director of Performance Management, Mr. Bafana Zwane, the Director of Strategic Management Monitoring and Evaluation, Dr. Chetty, our st Senior State Legal Advisor, Ms. Hazel Francis, the Head of our Finance Sure, thank you. We also, we're operating within austerity measures and we must thank colleagues like Sister Lakile Kumalo, Ubaba Rama Reddy, and other members of um, our OD unit because we don't provide refreshments or any kind of meals for any meetings within our department. Catering isn't allowed. So the team from OD, we're extremely innovative. Dudu and China always brought food to our meetings. And that assisted the process at a very different level. So people knew that there was an element of secondary reinforcement in terms of participating with an OFA. You get a nice biscuit and a lovely cup of coffee, courtesy of the OD team. Folks, throughout the process, you will realize that all work streams cannot function at the same level. You have five different work streams, and some work streams will actually be operating at a very, very exciting pace and would be able to fulfill all their obligations in relation to the work plan, which Johan made reference to in his presentation earlier. Don't be despondent if some work streams are lagging behind. It's the, the nature of any organization that all processes cannot be managed at an even and consistent pace. And it's something which um, you will have to be aware of the level of the project steering committee so that you can provide additional assistance and ongoing support, especially to teams which are lagging behind the key milestones in terms of your work plan. Another success factor in terms of the OD workspace within our department is that we're very fortunate we have um, over 350 years of collective experience within the OD directorate within KZN DOE. I repeat that, colleagues, over 350 years of collective experience just within the OD directorate. And that collective experience, which is reflective of the rich institutional memory of the colleagues within the OD directorate, importance in terms of ensuring that Everybody came on board and they shared their wisdom, they shared their vast repositories of knowledge in relation to how this process would be managed. Each of um, the colleagues within uh, our directorate assumed responsibility for providing ongoing technical, conceptual, and administrative support to the various work streams and linked to the notion of the 350 years of um, collective experience stroke wisdom within our unit. We also have a wonderful admin team. We have Sis Mariga, Sis Mandy, and Sis Tobile with our interns who provide great admin support to the other work streams. For example, issues of notice of meetings, the logistics in relation to coordination of meetings, um, ensuring that documentation is available, as well as minutes and records of meetings. We had a really found an extremely competent admin support team that assisted all the work streams. Critical in relation to the issue of um, the theory of change was the need for us to constantly reflect and uh, juxtapose some of the understanding that we had at the level of head office with colleagues from district as well as schools. And it would be a useful lesson that we can share with um, the rest of our OFA team throughout the country. If your business is health, go down to the hospitals, go down to the clinics. 
don't just confine OFA to a reified or bureaucratic process at the level of head office. It must be a process which does find expression at the level of your service delivery sites where the proverbial tire does in fact hit the tar. Equally importantly for the OFA process is the issue of a range of documents which you have at your disposal because sometimes we feel that OFA means we've got to start off from tabula rasa or a blank slate and there's no information. You will look within your offices on your website, you will have the strategic plan of your organization. You will have the annual performance plan. You will have your HR plan. There will be the equity plan. You will have the, many of us have embarked on a skills audit recently. You will have that report. You will have your workplace skills plan. You will have the reports emanating from your age. You can even look at minutes of your portfolio committee and your respective scopers. And this vast knowledge of information that you have in a range of documents does provide you with a useful base in relation to looking at information and the baseline is created there. And what you do during your course of interviews, which are semi-structured, those were the ones that we use, you try to triangulate information and the information that you have will then be juxtaposed with your visits to sites. For example, in our instance, we visit schools primarily to look at ways in which the understanding that we have on paper at the level of head office did in fact resonate with the understandings and the experiences of people within our schooling system. Folk in relation of um, no catering I've made reference to uh, a huge difficulty that we encountered with regard to the implementation of this project is while this project is being institutionalized, it doesn't mean that other work within your section, within your organization, within your departments comes to a halt. And you will frequently find that there are competing priorities. For instance, within the OFA context, we were grappling with um, the COVID lockdowns, and we also had the issue of the function shift where the ECD function was migrated from the Department of Social Development to our department. So we were trying simultaneously to juggle several balls at the same time. It wasn't an easy process, but these are the realities that you've got to be acutely aware of. You will find that while you're busy with OFA, the MEC will indicate to you that he or she needs a review of a certain structural entity within your organization. There will be other areas, for example, business process management issues, which you will need to attend to. And um, OFA isn't the only show in town. So it's important for you to understand that you've got to have an understanding which makes space and structural provision for a range of other activities, because you're not only dealing with personnel from OD, you'll be dealing with personnel from a range of other business units and their priorities will have to be factored in to your work plan. The um, one area which we don't want to romanticize is that while we receive immense assistance and great support and camaraderie from certain colleagues within our department, you will invariably find that in a bag of apples, there are one or two which um, don't ripen as fast as the others. And right at the bottom of the bag, they may be the one which will have to be discarded. At times, it did become frustrating for us because you made repeated overtures to certain business units, certain officials, and they would either be indifferent to, even when they attended these processes, their enthusiasm and their lack of conviction was a source of irritation. And I want to be upfront around that. But you've got to put in place the necessary mitigation plans. And sometimes it means not necessarily going to the most senior person within a directed chief directed, but rather interacting with other people lower within the bureaucratic, bureaucratic 
hierarchy and you get greater joy and assistance from those people lower down within the system. Chair, I want to uh, conclude by indicating that um, OFA isn't a silver bullet or a panacea. Through the implementation of OFA, you're not going to be able to remedy all the ills of your organization overnight or within the three-year cycle. What OFA does do is it provides you with an understanding of some of the systemic problematic areas, and you've got to then work on exactly which ones you want to focus on, also understanding that you won't be able to change the landscape of your organization overnight. So be very sober and temperate in relation to some of the issues that you want to achieve. Look out for what uh, we frequently refer to in our department as low-hanging fruit. From the various work streams, you will find that there's a tremendous amount of information that you will have, and your biggest challenge won't be acquiring the information, but will rather be you have so much of information, what do you jettison and what do you save for another day because you cannot assimilate and consolidate all the information because you'll be overwhelmed. So you've got to be very realistic in relation to um, what are you going to include in terms of your findings. Each of the findings will have an accompanying recommendation and deal with issues which fall within your ambit of control. For example, within our department, we were also looking at certain issues in terms of um, school governance. You know that um, we have um, the former model C sector where school fees are now reaching astronomical levels. You will also find that uh, the, we were arguing very convincingly, or so we thought, that there needs to be a cap on school fees within that sector for obvious reasons. But that was an issue which fell outside of our limited sphere of control. And we said we will actually place that on a different forum because it requires further engagement from both our HOD and the MEC at the level of headcom and CEM, which are national structures. So deal with issues which you can influence directly, deal with issues where you can show tangible and significant improvement. And there's a lot of low hanging fruit within your system. So focus on those as well. It's important for us to um, consistently realize that we were very favored and privileged as a department. And that is why I said right at the outset of um, my presentation that um, the process will not be one which you can unproblematic replicate in all departments because of contextual factors, material conditions being different. But the most significant issue for us was that um, we had people like um, Marcel Wilson, um, Johan, and Anton. And Johan and Anton, we need to make repeated reference to because they were, in so many ways, they were the individuals within DPSA who consistently came to our assistance, came to our rescue. They provided us with the kind of assistance, the clarity in relation to the methodology, the clarity in relation to the toolkit, the clarity in relation to substantive issues which were embedded within the OFA process. And there were several engagements via virtual platforms, via face-to-face -face physical interaction between DPSA and ourselves. And I know that at this juncture, in terms of the institutionalization of the OFA process, DPSA will not be able to offer the kind of support that it offered our department to all other departments. It's practically impossible for them to do so. But we were only able to achieve what we achieved because of some of the factors that I mentioned internally to you. But the key for a pilot project within KZN and DOE can significantly be ascribed to um, Johan and Anton holding us by the hand and assisting us to traverse the rather rocky terrain which we came to know as OFA. So in a nutshell, that provides you with um, an understanding of some of the issues which um, I thought it's important for us to reflect on as a collective, but there may be issues which I may have um, omitted, and I'm going to uh, Ram and the team from the other office down the road to come in and um, assist in relation to 
critical issues which they feel I may have inadvertently left out. Rama, do you do the team in Durban? Thank you, Sunil. Uh, uh, I think, Sunil, I think you do you very well. Uh, but I think uh, from my side, um, that I think in view of the current fiscal crisis um, that's facing the public service and the government at large, uh, I think the answer to that is the operations management framework and embedded in that is the, the OFA, which uh, critically analyzed the systems and processes that's negatively impacting on service delivery. Um, and also, I think it's important that um, that when we make our recommendations, I think you touched on that, uh, do not include recommendations that you know will not, that we will not achieve even in the long term. Um, I think teamwork is a priority, it's cardinal. Okay, we seem to have lost Rama and the team from our other office. Perhaps we can hand back to you and they can join us at a later stage. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for those inputs, uh, Sunil and Rama and the team down uh, in KZN education uh, and also yeah, I would also like to urge people to perhaps uh, use the question and answer uh, button if you have any uh, questions uh, for the team or for the team down in KZN or even for us here at the DPSA around the offer, please feel free uh, to use the Q&A button at the bottom and post a question and we'll try our best uh, to answer that. At this stage, uh, I would love to uh, see if we can make contact with Tapsi Sol and uh, Godfrey uh, down, uh, or is it up or down, I don't know, from our side in the Northern Cape uh, to share their experiences with us. Uh, can you hear us, uh, Tapsi or Godfrey? Good morning, I can hear you. Can you hear us? Thank you. Yes, I can hear you. Please continue. Thank you so much. And good morning, We first to appreciate the, the opportunity as the Northern Cape. And having having gone through the, the OPA process, we must indicate that it was it was a learning curve for us. Yes, challenges here and there, but on the basis that we do we did this collectively and that it was properly coordinated. There were lessons that we learned and we realized as an institution that there are some things that we needed to correct because that's when you pick up some of the weaknesses within the organization in some areas of work where we, we thought that there's some improvements that needed to be done. But having said that, I'm not trying to waste any time. I actually want to hand over to, to Mr. Minnick, who is the, the acting chief director for, for corporate services. He took the reins where I left them and because we worked together as a team, he will be able to do the presentation so that other, other provinces are able to learn. But importantly, colleagues, don't be scared of this challenge because it, it actually affords an opportunity to correct what we did wrong in our different institutions. Over to you, Mr. Menek. Uh, thank you very much, Ma'am Sol. Uh, good morning, colleagues. To shoot straight into the, into the presentation, Slide two just gives you an overview of our presentation in terms of introduction and overview which Marcel uh, made, your critical success factors, your challenges, and how we manage such challenges, and then just some concluding remarks. In terms of our overview is that one, offer requires of one to be honest and objective in your assessment and diagnosis, because if you don't do that, you run the risk of not being able to self-correct. So, so there's a degree of objectivity in honesty that's required to enable you to then be able to then see where are the challenges, what informs those challenges and how do you address that. But also we needed to learn that there must be acceptance of what the data reveals because more often than not, when we do such assessments or self-reflection, 
we are not always uh, accepting of the outcomes of such. Uh, and so that's one of the lessons which we also learn. But also, we need to acknowledge the gaps and then put in place measures to address those gaps. And, and what, we've, what we've done, and we speak to that, you can't come to the end and then I want to fix. As you acknowledge gaps and challenges, you'll have to see how best you address those, not as part of the offer process, but as part of the general learning process as an institution. And that for us was quite important. In terms of our critical success factors, there was central coordination. Uh, Marcel, as the then chief director for corporate services, led the process, but there was buy-in right across from HOD to the lowest official and so on. Uh, we had to engage in weekly sessions with all the relevant working streams. But also what, we've, that what we did in our instance is that although work streams worked in independently, but we would then come together in a group and we do peer review, we assess, we critique, we analyze and we make inputs so as to ensure that whatever the final outcomes is, it's a collective uh, counter because of whatever fear they might be having. But uh, but also, there was also some fear amongst our officials and even amongst our managers that the diagnostic review might be used to assess their performance, or might be used as a performance assessment instrument in terms of their own individual and program performance. So so we needed to have, we needed to deal with those two challenges because those are, those are the challenges that if you don't deal with them, people would not be honest, they won't be forthright, they won't be objective and therefore it might compromise the outcomes of your, of your process and the document that you want to put forward at the end of the day. Uh, what, what, what we did to manage such challenges, one was that, like I spoke to the collective ownership, that executive management and senior management, uh, we sat together with our challenges and we say, but how can we address, how can we improve? Instead of saying, but who did not do what and who did not do this? Because there are sometimes you find there are systemic challenges which we need to address, but also there are operational challenges which we needed to address. And what we found in our instance is that the answers lies within the teams. Our people know the solutions. It's just that sometimes you don't afford them scope and space or a platform for them to vent and to uh, raise such issues. So, so that we, we needed to do that. And hence, we needed to engage all our officials to ensure that, one, there's uniform understanding in terms of OFA and what OFA seeks to achieve, even prior to you engaging in the actual working streams. because. If there's no uniform understanding amongst all officials in the institution, they might not be willing to participate because out of misunderstandings or out of fear of uh, retribution and so on. So it's absolutely important to ensure that all officials are on board and they understand these processes. Clearly, they can see what this, what's meant to the outcomes of this and how this will achieve uh, uh, enable the organization to move forward. Also, we use the outcomes to address our torment, our process and gaps. For argument's sake, in the past, we had our service delivery model residing under OD. When we undertook this process, we realized that but it, because it was under OD, there was an HR focus instead of a service delivery element for, or service focus. And therefore, you need to then migrate that to strategic management, where you lump it together with policy coordination, service delivery improvement, so as to ensure that there's much more coherence and there's much more better coordination and alignment in terms of those functional 